Hey, what's going on YouTube? I am the Connoisseur of Nothing, and today is Sunday. Sunday is gun day. This one's going to be coming out a little late. I've been having um, some technical technical difficulties uh, getting this video out today, so um, let's get right into it. And um, I want to help out some people. I know um, this year there's been a lot of new gun owners, and I'm sure over the next couple months there's going to be a lot more with it being um, income tax season. So, um, about two years ago, I got my first gun. Why did I get my first gun? Well, I had always been interested in guns. And around this time, there was stories coming out about young women being abducted. And there were videos coming out of vans that were like soundproof. You could be inside of a scream at the top of your lungs. People wouldn't be able to hear you from the outside. So, um, there was a lot of fear for a lot of women at that time. And uh, one day I got home from work and got my shower. I ate. Me and my lady, we sit down. We're looking for a movie to have some quality time. And my phone rings. I pick up the phone. It's my niece. And she's crying. And she's saying that um, there's this truck that's following her. So she got scared and she ran into a gas station. And um, she wanted me to come get her. So I hurry up, threw on some basketball shorts and a t-shirt, and I was out the door. Like that. So, when he got there, everything was okay. I ended up taking her home. Uh, we discussed it with her mother, and, and nothing else happened from this. Um, but it was a teachable moment for me. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much a fearless individual. I don't, I'm not scared of many things other than spiders. I don't really fear much else. So, the the realization came to me is um, I've always known I'm, I'm for the people I love. I'll put it all on the line with without question. However, in doing so, it's it's always best to have the best tools you can have to, to achieve the job that you're looking to do. If you want to put a hole, it's it's best to, to get a drill. If you want to put in a screw, it's best to get a screwdriver. If you want to hit something, it's best to get a hammer, right? So in the event I, I am called to action where I do have to protect my loved ones, I want the best opportunities available to me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, I have had some self-defense training. I always keep a knife on me, uh, and amongst other things. But what's the great equalizer? A gun. That's why they were created. That's what it was called, the great equalizer. So that next weekend, I went ahead and got my concealed carry permit. Here in PA, it's a simpler process. It's going downtown to the sheriff's office, giving them $20. They run a background check. They take your picture. You're good. So I went ahead and did that, and I went ahead and started shopping online. I had already been doing some research because um, I've always been interested in guns, and there was three guns I had my eye on. One was the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield. It's a great gun. Concealed carry. I hold seven rounds, and uh, I think it has an extended magazine that holds eight. Other option was the Taurus G2C was a newer gun, very popular at the time. Held double stack magazine, held 12 rounds. It yeah, holds 12 rounds. And the third was a Walther pistol. I think it was called the Creed, Walther Creed, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it had a similar capacity to the Taurus. So ultimately what I went with was the Taurus G2C. I have it right here. This is it. Towards G2C. Um, this gun has been safety checked. I've already cleared it out. Why did I go with this gun? So, the capacity, as I mentioned, the Smith & Wesson Shield only holds 7. This holds 12. So, that, it was a good size. Um, all the guns were, were pretty much similar in size. The shield is a little thinner than this, and I think the grip might be a little shorter, or it's pretty much there. Um, this isn't too much bigger than the shield in, in all respects. Also, this has what's known as a Picatinny rail. If you look down here. Uh, this piece right here of rail section, you can attach weapon mounted lights. So, what I wanted a gun for, I wanted a gun that was big enough for me to comfortably shoot and learn on but I also wanted to be smaller for me to wear every day. And this fit the bill. This still does fit the bill. This is 
one of my 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 favorite guns to carry um even to this day and i have a lot of a lot of other guns this is still number one this is still probably my second favorite to carry right because it because it's it's small it's it's relatively thin um decent capacity and i learned how to shoot on this platform i put a lot of rounds through Taurus G2Cs. This is my second one. The first one I actually gave to my sister as a graduation gift. Um, so that's why I got it. It fit the bill of what I needed. Um, I knew I wanted to carry it every day. Um, it was also going to play a role of self-defense. It was affordable, which was pretty much number one. All these guns were around the same price at the time. And I'm not rich, so... I went with a, a good affordable gun. I didn't go with the cheapest thing I could find. I went with what I thought was the best bang for the buck and it has served me right since then. Things you may want to, you may want to get, you may want to stay away from, it depends on what your needs are. So I think um, for the most part, the ladies want something very small. And dudes, we're typically going to want something big. Ideally, you need to be somewhere in the middle. So, this was the next gun I got. This was, this is the uh, Canic TP9 SF Elite. It's a beautiful gun. This has been safety checked as well. By safety check, what I mean is um, there's no bullets in the magazine. There's no bullets in the chamber. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of dark. But um, that's what I mean by safety check. There's no ammo in any of these guns. So why did I get this? I got this because I wanted something bigger. That's how we are. That's how dudes are. We want bigger. We want better. We want stronger. We want the biggest truck we can find. We want everything big, strong, and durable, right? So that's why I got this gun. I wanted something bigger. This was also a very good value perspective in comparison to the Glock 19. I actually did still end up getting one, but... Uh, this has very nice sights in my opinion. This front sight has a, a red fiber optic sight. You can also switch it out with the green one and also I think an orange one I have. Um, trigger's phenomenal. I'm not going to get too much into triggers because uh, this is more so for the, the new buyer. But um, triggers do play a good part in you being accurate. The better the trigger, typically the more accurate it's going to be. But a bad shooter is still a bad shooter. A good, a good shooter is still a good shooter. Doesn't matter with the trigger, right? So, and then women are going to want something more along this. It's small. Um, you can very easily conceal this. Women don't put don't put a gun in your purse. How many times have you heard of somebody getting something stolen out their purse? How many times have you seen a video of somebody stealing somebody's purse while they're walking down the street? Don't put a gun in your purse. That's not smart. Don't do it. There's other options. Um, if you do want to wear it around the waist, you can. Get you a round the waist holster inside the waistband. You may have to go up a waist size in your pants or so. You could do that. There's um, these belly bands. They're similar to like a, like a waist trainer. That, and you could tuck the gun in there. Uh, you could tuck a gun. Also hold an extra magazine. And you'll, you'll be good to go. And just wear a loose fitting shirt, loose fitting blouse. And you're fine. Just don't put it in your purse. It's, it's, it's not a good idea to put it in your purse. Purses get stolen. People steal a lot of purses. But um, do one with something like this. It's small. Uh, to give you a size comparison. Let's go here. I'll give you a size comparison. See the, the, the slide is a lot longer. Let me bring this up. The grip is a lot taller. Right? On the on the canic, right? This is my everyday carry, no matter what. This gun is always on me. A lot of times I carry two guns. This is always on me. I put it in this little holster right here. This is a pocket holster. So that's right in here. Slide that right in your pocket. It covers up the trigger, and um, that's really all that needs to be covered. And whenever I pull it out, it comes right up out of here. Why do I carry this every day? It's small, it's easy to carry. I put this in my pocket, it disappears. I've done complete kitchen remodels with this in my pocket and forgot it was there the whole time. Never a problem. Uh, also, capacity I just showed you the canic that holds 15 rounds. 
this holds 12 rounds. No, this holds 13 rounds. So it's a lot smaller, very similar capacity. Capacity is not much lower than that. So it has a lot of things that I like. Do I recommend this? Do I recommend this be your first gun? Probably not. It takes some training to get used to shooting smaller guns. They're a lot snappier. Whenever you're shooting, you want to have recoil. And whenever you're shooting smaller guns like this, the recoil is more substantial because it's smaller and it's lighter. The bigger and heavier the gun, typically the lighter the recoil is going to be. So you actually want something bigger versus smaller to learn on. Okay? Now, there are exceptions to the rule. It can be a big gun with a big ass bullet. It still won't hurt to shoot. Right? And then there's small guns that have very tiny bullets that are like super tiny. And yeah, the recoil is not gonna be it's not gonna be horrible. But it's also not an ideal self defense weapon. You can do better. And uh, usually the smaller guns, the real super tiny ones, are usually less reliable than bigger guns. It's usually more difficult to make smaller guns reliable. And the, the, the smaller ammo like that, the ammo is usually less reliable as well. For instance, um, one, one gun I do recommend that if, if you are serious about self-protection and, and learning and training, I recommend getting a 22 pistol. Uh, the one I have here is a TX-22. Um, if you can notice how small that barrel is, let me show you on here. If you can notice how small that barrel is compared to this one, this shoots a 9mm bullet along with all the rest of the pistols I have. This shoots a 22 caliber bullet. It's a very small bullet. It's a rimfire cartridge. Um, and shooting this gun there's like no recoil at all um i got this specifically so i could train during this time period because the price of ammo for nine millimeter is insane right now it's about four dollars a box at the time i got that i was getting uh, boxes of rounds for 22 for like four or five dollars and right now it's increased some more it's like 11 or 12 dollars right now but um it's a good value it's a good way to train without breaking the bank and spending a whole lot of money even whenever prices go back to normal, it's still a good option. So, oh, one of the points I wanted to make was the, the ammo. The 22 ammo, this gun's very reliable. 22 ammo is not. Sometimes I'll shoot, and that round doesn't go off. It's happened several times. And it's not just with this gun. I have a 22 rifle as well. That's just the nature of the ammo. It's less of quality ammo. It's cheaper ammo to make. And rimfire is naturally less reliable just because of how it's been designed that's why most most cartridges don't run fire anymore and that's that's very old technology let's not get too far off tangent though so i'm a new gun buyer what do i do oh, this is what you do do some research if you have the opportunity if you have if you have a gun range in your area that allows you to rent guns and try different guns go to the range spend the extra money to try out different guns because at the end of the day, I can make my recommendations. I'm not you. I don't know what you're going to be able to shoot with best. You will find out by shooting. You will find out by shooting several times. Holding it in your hands. Making sure you're able to grip the gun correctly. Making sure that the, the recoil is not too much for you. You know? And if you have some time, get some training as well. But more than anything... Understand what your needs are because you can find a gun that's exceptionally for you, but if it doesn't fit your needs, it's not for you. It may feel great in your hand. You may be hitting the bullseye on a dime every time you pull the trigger. There's just some magic about it, right? But if it doesn't fit your needs, if you're somebody who needs to carry a gun every day and the gun is as, as big as a horse, it's too big. It ain't going to work for you. So... Understand what your needs are. If, if you're somebody who's going to keep the gun in the house, go for go for the biggest gun you can comfortably carry. Don't need to be small if you're not carrying it. If you're somebody who's going to be carrying 
every day get you more than one gun or if you just want to get one gun get you a gun that's going to serve both needs again I recommend the Taurus G2C everybody that I've ever put it in their hands they like it they all like it may not be their favorite out of all my guns I have but everybody likes it it's a good gun it's a good shooter it's not too expensive it's a good size to do everything to cover all bases uh, so I think that I think that just about covers it um, as far as the process what you're gonna do if you're looking to buy a gun online you would shop around see who has the best price who, who has what you want and you'll go ahead and place your order you're gonna to have to get the gun mailed to what's called a FFL. If I'm not mistaken, that stands for Federal Firearms Licensee. I may be wrong. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get it mailed to an FFL, which is probably gonna be your local gun store, uh, pawn shop. Some people run FFLs privately as a business. And they'll mail it there. That FFL will call you. They'll say, hey, we got your gun. You wanna come down and get it? thank you thank you for calling yes I'll be down there to go get it today I'll be down to go get it tomorrow or whenever I get a chance to you'll go down to your FFL you'll fill out your form they want to go ahead and run your background check as long as everything's a go you pay your transfer fee you get your gun you go home you go to the range you do whatever you want to do it's that simple it's it's not very complicated I know it's it's intimidating at first it was for me as well whenever I was first getting into it it was intimidating figuring out how to do everything and doing it all for the first time. But once you do it once, it's, it's very simple. And you understand it's, you were overthinking it. And uh, yeah, if, you, if, if you have any further questions, please feel free. Go ahead and comment down below. Uh, channel's still pretty small, so I do have the time to go ahead and address all questions. If there's something that you would like for me to go more in detail to, um, I'll be happy to do that, whether that's through discourse or if I make a whole nother video about it. I know one of my friends, uh, he's just now getting into him and he wants me to make a video on cleaning um, on cleaning guns, specifically AK-47. So I'll probably do that too. Um, in addition to this, I think that would be very good for the new gun owners, understanding how to clean your gun. Um, so please like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, and we out. Peace.